Howdy y'all, welcome back to yet another week of distance learning. And in today's video, we are going to be addressing the dreaded bar chord for all my guitar students out there. And for some of you, you may be familiar with that term and hearing me say we're gonna learn bar chords might give you a little bit of anxiety perhaps if, if this is something that you've tried on your own and um, have been frustrated by it, then my hope is that we can address that frustration and we can talk about how to approach playing bar chords in a way that is um, safe and healthy and productive because uh, they're going to be able, they're going to enable us to be able to do a lot of really cool things on the guitar, but there's no questioning that it's probably definitely going to be the most difficult thing um, that you have tried to do on your instrument yet. And I'll be honest and say that for many people, uh, young and adult learners alike, by the point in their guitar playing where they get to bar chords, um, oftentimes what ends up happening is they try it out for a week or so, uh, their hands hurt, their fingers hurt, and that's where they ultimately end up calling it quits. Um, so let me go ahead and preface this video by saying two things. First, it's going to take way longer than a week to be able to learn how to play bar chords. So do not decide to quit guitar after only a week of trying this. It's going to take much, much longer. You need to be patient when you're trying to learn this. The second thing is that if at any point in time while doing this, your hand starts to hurt, your fingers start to hurt, if you feel any physical pain at all, stop what you're doing, put the guitar down, take a break, go do something else, okay? Um, pain is, our, is a feedback system. Our body gives us uh, pain signals to let us know that the thing that we are doing is not good for us. So when you feel those pain signals, um, that is your body telling you to stop doing whatever you're doing on the guitar and come back to it later. Okay, so with that being said, bar chords, and the spelling of that is a little different, B-A-R-R-E, bar chords. Bar chords are a way for us to essentially transpose the tuning of the guitar to be able to play um, these very movable chord shapes. Um, bar chords have a lot of use when you are changing the key of a song to fit somebody's singing voice. Um, so if you need to move a song up, um, say a half step or a whole step or even just to an entirely different key, uh, bar chords are very useful for being able to do that. The word bar, uh, as the name implies, you can think about like a, a crossbar, um, you know, um, where, where do we encounter bars? There's a, a crossbar that, you know, will hold your shower curtain up, something like that. It's a long uh, rod or a long piece of uh, some sort of material. And uh, that's actually the role that your index finger is going to be playing. Your index finger is going to act like the bar um, in, in the bar chord. So let me just demonstrate, I'll show you real quick on the guitar what this looks like and some of you might recognize it. So what's, what ends up happening is the index finger um, will push down um, all of the strings on a given fret and then the other three fingers will fill in and, and it'll make a chord that'll sound like this. Now, uh, to be honest, bar chords don't always mean that you have to play, you have to push down all six strings with your index finger. You can have what are known as partial bar chords, where you might only push down five or four, or even only three strings at once. Um, so that it's really more so of a technique, and that technique means how am I gonna use my index finger to be able to push down multiple strings at the same time? Okay, so in order to make this work, we have to think about first and foremost, where inside of the fret is the best place for our finger to go? Because you can see very clearly that there's quite a bit of room. You know, my index finger can go anywhere from all the way back here to all the way up here. And those are all considered to be spots inside of the first fret. They're all valid. But there is a sweet spot. There's a place that is better than all the other places. Um, and the reason why it's the sweet spot is because it's the place where the string is um, the closest to what we call here, these are uh, metal nuts. And the nuts here are actually what are going to give us our note. So um, it's kind of difficult to see, but let me see if I can try to do this. So here we have the guitar, horizontal, and um, what ends up happening is when the string goes down, when it, it's going to actually only con it's only going to go as far as the metal nut here any further down that you push that you push the string past the metal nut doesn't matter 
the note comes out as soon as the string contacts the metal right here. Um, and so you can kind of think about this like it's a lever or a seesaw. And um, maybe in your own science classes, you've tried, tried to sort of experiment where if you have a plank of wood that is resting um, on top of, of something like what we would call a fulcrum, um, then when you put something really close to the middle, um, that's going to actually be, it, it's going to require the least amount of work to move it. Whereas if you put something all the way at the very end, that's gonna require the most amount of work to move it. So you want to think about this in the most efficient way possible. If we put our finger all the way back here, closest to the headstock of the guitar, then we're having to try and push down all of this excess string before the first fret, before the first metal nut there. And that's just an extra unnecessary work. You could also come in here, and if you try and push down the string right next to the white this white part here, you're, you're gonna actually feel that the string is very, very, very taut there. It's actually hard to push down. But as I get closer to the metal part, the string actually softens up a little bit and it gets easier to push down right here. So this is actually the guitar kind of telling you that, hey, if you're gonna need to push down all these strings, which is gonna require a lot of work naturally, then this spot right here is gonna be the, give you the easiest time. And indeed, the best place to do bar chords is gonna be essentially right up against the metal nut. Now, you do need to be careful because um, if you get on top of the metal, then you'll start to get this kind of strange muted sound, which, you know, it's kind of a cool ex extended technique, but for the sake of creating like a typical pure guitar sound, you need to make sure you stay off of the metal so that you get the, the true chord sound like that. Okay. Now, so we talked about where inside of the fret our finger needs to go. Now let's talk about the sort of like the angle uh, that the finger will need to approach. The first thing I'll say is that you don't want to think about putting your finger down flat in the sense that all of this skin is going to touch because that's not uh, that's not efficient. And also, if you put the finger down totally flat like that, it's actually going to restrict your other fingers and their ability to set up for the for the rest of the chord because the index finger is only one part of the bar chord. Um, the other fingers have to put down other notes as well. Otherwise, your bar chord is always just going to sound like this, which you can only do so much with. So you don't want to put the finger down flat flush against the neck. What you actually want to do is you want to have a little bit of rotation. And that rotation is basically, think about your uh, the rest of your hand and your fingers sort of rotating a little bit up and a little bit away from the neck. So not rotating back towards this, because that's going to flatten that finger out. But notice how when I move my fingers a little bit away from the guitar, that index finger starts to roll. It's going to actually roll backwards towards the headstock, okay? So we want the finger to have a little bit of a rolled setup so that I'm gonna push it down and then I'm gonna show you my finger. Notice how the marks from where the strings were are stronger on this side of the finger than they are on this side of the finger. So this shows that I'm actually using the, the side of the finger a little bit and not totally just the flat middle, okay? So, so the very first exercise I would want you to do before you even start trying to trying to actually play bar chords is to set up with your index finger on on the strings, um, and you could start down here, or truthfully, you could even go you know up to say the third or the fifth fret. The strings do get a little bit softer here, um, so it might actually feel more comfortable uh, depending on you know your preference. And then what you're going to do is <clears throat> you're going to start with the index finger just flat against uh, the strings like that. You don't even need to push them down, just rest it on the strings. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate out a little bit, rotate your finger back towards the headstock, and hopefully that rotation, you should start to feel the strings naturally want to, want to go down, okay? And I will just practice that again in super slow motion. I'm rotating. It's a pretty subtle thing, but that rotation will cause the strings to hopefully start to push down. Um, you can practice it doing that, you know, just over and over again, getting used to that sensation there. Then the next thing I want you to try is to take the index finger and let's just go here, say to the third fret. And what we're gonna start doing first is we're gonna do a one string bar. And what I mean by that is we're gonna depress the top E string 
only the top E string, but we're going to use the same bar technique where the where it's the index finger slightly rotated on the side there. Um, and that should be really easy for you because you're basically just smushing your index finger down on a single string. Then you're going to jump up and you're going to grab the B string and make this a two string bar chord. And that should still be pretty easy because you can um, do most, you can pretty much do all the work with just your fingertip here. But try to keep the finger straight for the most part. Don't let it get super bent like that because that's not going to work. You want to keep the finger mostly straight and push down two strings. And then hopefully you can see that there's a pattern that will emerge here where now I push down uh, three strings and get these fingers out of the way so you can just see better. So I'm pushing down three strings and then I'm grabbing four strings and then I'm grabbing five strings and then I'm grabbing six strings. And this is all with only the left hand. We don't even need to worry about playing the, the right hand yet because we're still familiarizing ourselves with these sensations over here. So again, one string, two strings, three, four, five, six. And then once you've done that, uh, you know, only push it down for, a, for like a, a second or two, release, and then check your lines on your finger and see are the lines on my fingers slightly favoring uh, the left side of the finger or not. Um, that's gonna tell you if you're doing the proper, the proper rotation. So then you can take that exercise and if you want to be able to double check how good your bar chord or like how good your index finger's position is in that point, that's when you can start to add in the right hand fingers. So what I would do here is um, check the E string, make sure that there's no buzzing um, because buzzing would mean that I'm not getting the string pushed down correctly and make sure that there's not that weird uh, sort of dull metallic sound either. We wanna have that good, beautiful tone quality just on that one string. Now I'm gonna check the E and the B string together when I push them both down. Sounds pretty good. Now I'm gonna check the top three strings. Sounds good. Four strings. As you get to the fourth, uh, as you get to four strings, um, you can start playing by rolling your index finger down. So starting on the 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 um, the D string there, and just rolling down rather than trying to like pluck individual notes. You can just start to think of that like a strum. So there's four strings. Now five strings, starting from A. Everything sounds pretty good, and then all six of them. the tone quality is still pure, the notes keep ringing out, there's no buzzing, there's no dull metallic sound. That's, that's the ideal um, index finger placement for the bar chord. So the index finger, unfortunately, as important as it is, is just one component to the bar chord. And like I said earlier, the other three fingers have to play an important role in actually making the bar chord sound like the chord it's supposed to sound like. So when we set up um, our index finger here, we will, we will end up using at least typically two, if not all three of these fingers to make enough to make the rest of the chord. Um, technically, you do have some bar chords that will only use one finger, but those are more advanced and we're not gonna learn those for now. We're gonna start with the, I think the best, the best introduction bar chord is F major. Um, F major is useful um, for uh, a lot of common keys and um, I've already found some songs that I've wanted to teach y'all, but they've required the, the usage of an F major chord. Um, and so I've had to avoid, either avoid teaching those songs or rearrange them in some manner to avoid the F chord. But I'm ready to get back to those songs and we're gonna need to learn the F major chord shape to play them. So an F major chord shape um, involves the bar on the first fret, getting all six strings pushed down. And then you're going to Put your ring finger on the third fret of the A string. You're going to put your pinky finger behind it, also inside of the third fret, but this time on the D string. And then you're gonna put your middle finger on the second fret of the G string. And what you should hear is something like this. So I wanna take the moment to actually point something out. And what I'm going to end up doing is basically I'm going to slide all of my fingers back uh, one fret towards the headstock. So of course my index finger, since it's on the first fret, it's going to go off the guitar. <clears throat> and then now everything else is shifted back and I'm going to play this chord. The 
That sounds really nice. And that's because that's actually our good old friend E major, one of the first chords that we've learned. That was an E major chord. Now I didn't play it with one, two, and three. I played it with two, three, and four. Because the index finger I was using to bar, and so I just slid it off the neck. So what I'm actually showing you is that bar chords are basically, they're chord shapes that we already know. And the only extra element is that everything gets moved or transposed up to a different fret. And then no matter how far you move, you can keep the same chord shape in the, in the second, third, and fourth fingers. And the only thing that has to happen is that the index finger needs to go down um, wherever it is. So right there is, is another bar chord of the same shape. Or right here is another bar chord of the same shape. Or you could come all the way up here, and right here is a bar chord of the same shape. So that's what I, what I was talking about towards the beginning of the video with the idea that bar chords are movable or transposable very easily. It's really easy to move the chords around. And I can just walk through you real quick, um, sort of like the, the chromatic chord progression as you move up the neck. So without the bar, I said that this was an E major chord. And when I bring everything up so that all, so that the bar is now in the first fret, this is F major. If I come up one more, this is F sharp or G flat major. If I go up again, now we're at G major. Up again is now G sharp or A flat major. Up again, we're now at A major. Up again, A sharp or B flat major. Up again, B major. And I can keep going, but truthfully, once you get to about the seventh fret or so, the bar chords, at least this shape of bar chord, starts to become a little bit impractical, at least on the acoustic guitar. Now, on um, my electric guitar back there, it's very common to have uh, bar chords of this shape go much higher on the neck. Um, but because the, the this guitar neck is much wider and thicker, um, it makes the facilitating the bar chords up high on the neck a little bit more difficult. So that's all just to show you that the bar chords are, you know, like I said, very movable. You can get them all, all around the neck. Um, and once you get the mechanism of action, the index finger and everything uh, worked out, you'll find that they're incredibly useful because you can just slide. and you never you don't really change much of anything at all your hand shape is very consistent and it allows you to really focus on things like strumming patterns or singing um, and that 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 to me is a lot of the the usefulness and the beauty of bar chords so uh, let's go back to our F major shape again because that's the only bar chord we're going to cover for this video and I want to make sure you're really sure about how to set it up so we start again with the index finger bar inside of the first fret making sure that we are rolled back slightly, angled back to the uh, headstock, and then we're getting hopefully all six strings pushed down comfortably. And then it starts from the ring finger on the third fret of the A string, the pinky finger on the third fret of the D string, and the index finger, I'm sorry, the middle finger on the second fret of the G string, and we have F major. <laughs> If you're just getting started learning bar chords and you find this to be very, very difficult or even painful, um, once you know, make sure, again, you're stopping when you feel that pain and you're taking a break. When you come back to it again in the future, though, there's a, there's a slightly easier alternative you can get started with. And what that is, is you're gonna take your index finger and you're gonna do one of those partial bars instead. So like we, like we warmed up with, instead of doing a six string bar chord, you're actually just gonna do the, the top two strings, the B and the E string. Then all you need to, the, the last thing you need to do is to skip the E string since it's open now, and you're gonna start by playing uh, third finger um, C on the A string. So what that will sound like is this. So listen how it's pretty much the same chord. Here's the full bar, the full F major bar. And then here's the partial bar. And the only note that's missing is this low F1 up there. So the partial bar F major chord is a good option to start with as well because um, it is much easier to bar the top two strings than it is to bar all six of them. Um, but of course, I want you to keep challenging yourselves, uh, gradually build up that strength um, that's required to be able to play um, the full bar chords. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and conclude the video here. And I know that we didn't do a whole lot of playing, 
but the bar chord concept is um, super important to get right the very first time you do it. And the, you know, in, in your first few weeks of practice, you wanna make sure that you're doing it right the same way every time. So we're gonna be going through bar chords very slowly. Um, later this week, I'll address a different bar chord shape um, that uses the same, uh, you know, the same index finger action, but uses the other fingers in a slightly different manner. So be patient with all this. Again, I'll remind you that uh, the best thing you can do is uh, take care of yourself physically when you're doing this. Any pain or discomfort you feel is a sign that it's time to, to stop playing bar chords for the moment. And if you've got any specific questions and you want to sit down, um, sit down with me and, and go through this stuff together, um, office hours is a great time to do that. 11.30 to 12.30 every day of the week. And I'm always available for questions via blend message or email. Hope you found this video to be useful. Thanks for watching and happy practicing.